Hey guys, it's Greg. In this video, I want to show you Triumph, a game uh, where players are going to fight for being new emperor of Roman Empire. So the game is for uh, at least three players, and this is why this is because you are going to backstab each other. You are going to bid for better seats in parliament, let's say, and so on, so on. So in this game, you're going to, once, first of all, you know, spread your influence across the Europe and also you want to conquer another realms uh, and other places uh, so your um, Roman Empire can grow. And in the same time, you need to fight with barbarian hordes that are trying to invade Rome and kill you all. So, because when um, barbarians enters them, Rome, all players are dead and everyone lost. So Triumph is a very interesting title, also a prototype, so keep this in mind. Uh, those components, I believe, are not final. If you are interested in this title, just check out the rest of this video where I am showing you components and mechanics of this game. So the game is set on a table. Right now I would like to tell you more about the components and general flow of the game. So in the game you are a part of a Roman family. Uh, powerful Roman family and your goal is to become a new emperor. Uh, to do this uh, you are going to collect uh, points, victory points, and you, you collect those victory points by uh, fighting with uh, barbarian armies and spreading your influence that is represented by those cubes over here. This is a setup, this is the, um, how you start the game. Um, so that's why you, uh, we have our starting influence cubes only in, uh, in Italy. Now, what elements we have here? On the top part of the board we have an uh, auxiliary track that represents uh, where we have those tokens of... Um, oh my god, well, I don't know what, eagle. And uh, those tokens are used to uh, mark different parts of the Europe and uh, Africa uh, to show that those places are dominated by Roman Empire. So when another provinces are, are taken by the Romans, you're using those tokens to mark them to show that uh, Gallia right now is controlled by the Roman Empire. Those tokens represent um, armies that you can recruit um, to fight um, with barbarians. Um, right. What else we have here? So I already told you we have different uh, different um, regions, locations. All those locations or regions with different symbols, and uh, those are barbarians for uh, Roman people, and you are going to conquer them to build this Roman Empire. So you're starting here, and you're going to spread around the world. Uh, Rome, Roma is not a location. Roma is in here. Here you can build buildings. And we have a stack of buildings and display of buildings in here. All those uh, buildings give you different, <coughs> different bonuses, but also they give you victory points uh, if you are controlling them with your cubes of uh, influence. Right, so for example, we have uh, this here we have four, one is on a board, and three are on a display like temple, mausoleum, th theater, basilica, forum, uh, therms, and so on. You can build those locations, get, um, get victory points, but also you can get this uh, bonus, uh, those, this token of, for theater theater, for example, and this, uh, this skill, this ability of this location grants you some kind of boost during the game. On the right hand side, we have a display of different uh, barbarian armies that are marching to conquer uh, Italy, to conquer Rome, and all players can't lose the game when one of those armies enters Rome. And the goal of the players is obviously to fight with barbarians and um, conquer locations, but those tokens, those markers with, um, with swords represents armies that are marching to Rome. So we, if we have one in here and ma in, on a map, all locations with those, hmm, let's say, rivers are, are uh, connected. So uh, Sardinia and uh, 
Arturia are connected. So if this token is moving, it would move here and then enters Rome. If it enters Rome, um, basically players are losing the game. Uh, obviously also the only one player is winning the game, so it's like semi-co-op, let's say. Uh, right, and on this left hand side we have a um, spreadsheet, let's say, of all uh, rounds uh, and actions available in the game. So, the game is played for three rounds, three rounds, and each round is split into seven phases. So, first phase with red and the last phase with red circles, those are like upkeep phase, more or less, so nothing. Uh, important, I mean, we are setting, setting up the game, but no, not really much of the game is happening here. All um, mechanics are hidden in here with those uh, yellow, uh, with those yellow actions, with those yellow phases. Now, but before we are going to go through all those phases, I need to tell you more about mechanics and things that you can do in this game. So, uh, all those um, phases, are, uh, each of those phases starts with the bidding phase. So each player starts with the hands of uh, members of your family and you can play your cards uh, one for each of the phases. So after one phase, each card is discarded and you're gaining this much influence. The more influence you get for this phase, the better seat you are going to get in a castle, for example that grants you better actions, more powerful actions, and you are going to perform your action as a first player. So the more influence you get, this is, go this is going to be an order of uh, taking actions during each of the uh, phases in each of the rounds. So no, uh, on those cards of the family, we have this influence used for bidding phase, and also we have those icons like in here, for example, that shows you how many um, troops or, or warriors uh, you are going to spawn uh, on the map uh, during battle phase. And in here we also have a little bit of negative interaction because for example we have um, those cards, uh, low cards, and I think also some buildings can grant you those tokens with pluses or with uh, even more, more bigger plus, but with also with um, with minuses, and this represents this negative interaction. So, for example, I can play this card and add, if I have, obviously, in my resources, and I can add plus two, so I have three influence, but someone else uh, can play, can add this to my influence and subtract two points from my influence. So you can, um, you can, influence your your opponents it's not only up to them what how many how much of influence each of them are going to have when you set up uh, and i mean when all of you pass and you are uh, you have clear winner who has the most um, influence and so on and so on you are going to perform those actions from top to bottom this is for the first uh, the player with the most influence and so on and so on these four and five four and five four five that means that those uh, actions are only used with four and five uh, players the game is um, for at least three players so this is bidding phase. Another thing are those cubes that I already told you, those are uh, agents, I'm calling this influence, and this represents a presence of, of, uh, of your family members in different areas and different provinces controlled by Rome, and you want to have your family members everywhere where, uh, where influence of the Rome is, because this is how you are going to get victory points. And um, another thing are those tokens, I already told you, those tokens represent an army that you're going to use to fight uh, barbarians. Those army tokens can trans transform uh, on this second side, and this more grey side represents garrisons. Uh, so like armies that are stationing in or some place and you can move them, paying. Uh, money. So obviously you can do a lot of things with money. You can pay uh, money to move them around the map to a to region where, uh, where, is going to, uh, where, where is going to be a battle this round. After three rounds, 
the game ends and uh, play with the most uh, victory points is the winner and basically this is it more or less i mean i'm i'm obviously giving you uh, an overview at those arc those um, rules are not in a detail maybe i also should tell you more about those cards those cards are changing a lot um, during the game because uh, each of them i think is completely different for each building without Influence cube gets one money, for example. For example, during spoils in a winning campaign, uh, if you f uh, if you follow, you gain one mm, show in a bigger frame. So, um, like money over here. Spoils of war. When you place a client, place one extra client. Uh, so it's client, not not agents. Client. It means influence. So those cubes. Um, so when you place a client, place one extra. So it's easier for you to spread your family members. Uh, if you're going to place a client, gain three instead, and so on, so on. So those cards are overwriting the basic rules of the game. Now, uh, we have also this deck of cards in here. Those cards just represent different bar barbaric armies that are going to try and conquer uh, Roma. So we have those layers 8. They are quite big, but we have everything in here, so it's really easy to manage this game. So first of all, we have buildings. Uh, eight of them in the game and in here you have all information what each of the buildings can do. Then we have an explanation of the icons, then we have an explanation of the conflict. I'm going to uh, skip some parts. Uh, barbarian, uh, barbarians invade, so when they mm, move to uh, province that is uh, controlled by Rome, uh, Roman Empire or to Roma and here we have those um, phases of the round. So let's go through the phases. First phase, the first phase, this red one is, is like, let's say, upkeep phase. So what happens here? Reveal enemy commanders and place them on the board. So basically you, you are revealing those cards in here and you're placing those tokens to show where they are going to uh, to appear to, sh to spawn. Then you are going to reveal building markers and place them face up next to the board. So depending on the uh, number of players, different number of those uh, buildings is revealed. Um, uh, reveal low cards and place them face up next to the board. So again, we, here we have a display of cards. There should be one more. I think I took it. Oh no, there's three. Uh, and this is the display that you can take with a proper action during one of the phases. Obviously, you can also take one of the cards from the, from, uh, from the deck, but this is going to be um, a random card. And after that, you're going to first phase where you're going to perform this bidding action. So each player is playing one card and you can change this influence on this card using those tokens that I showed you in a second. And uh, when you set who has the most influence, these actions are available to you. So take a, a, re a revealed a low card on or top card of the low deck, place one client on the board. That's it. Uh, move uh, your player marker to the rightmost space space of the turn order track. And for uh, all second and third and fourth player, those actions are basically the same. So you're taking uh, a card, you're playing one of your clients, and uh, basically that's it. So after that, this is the, the turn where you can spread your influence and take more low cards. Uh, after that, you can also, you may spend two talents, so two money, to take a, a, a revealed low card or to the top card of the low deck. So additional uh, possibility to take more of the low cards. There is no limit of the of the how many low cards you can have in your hand. So this is very, very cool uh, round, uh, phase. Now, second phase is in here. Again, you're bidding, then starting with the play with the most uh, influence, take a face up building tile and place it uh, on an available hill space in a room. So, in here, you can build those, uh, those buildings. Place one client on the board and gain one talent. So, each of the, of the locations has two spare spots here and here. You can put up to two um, agents. On the style, this one grants you victory points. This grant grants you this uh, this token uh, and ability of mausoleum. 
place one client on the board and gain one talent and to move your player marker to the rightmost space of the uh, turn track. Uh, for the rest of the players, take a, a face up building tile and place in an available space, place one client on the board. So you don't get uh, you don't get talent more or less and you're not moving uh, to the right most space on the turn track. Then you're going to the console phase and this phase is used when you are going to uh, resolve conflicts. So for the first play, first player gains three talents and can reroll dice that are used in the combat. Uh, move your player marker, yes, gain a one reroll of one of the battle dice, as I said, and for the other players gain two talents or gain one talent. And now I want to say, tell you a few, a few words about battles. So for example, in here we are going to have a battle and when the battle starts you can obviously move those, uh, you can recruit guys uh, from this uh, auxiliary track you you have to pay for them and uh, the amount of talents that is depicted over here so for uh, for each of those um not for those those are used to um, for, wait a second ah here um bah, bah. so three of those the, of those symbols are visible so up to three tokens can be recruited. Now, each of them costs one, because um, this is depicted in here. For example, if you would like to recruit them in Syria, each of those tokens from auxiliary track would cost three uh, talents. So right now, uh, players can rec recruit up to three uh, armies and put them in here. So for example, one, two, and three. And uh, then you can add other uh, armies, for example, as I said, uh, those stationing armies that you, you get, again, you need to pay money and then you can move them to uh, over here. And when you are ready, oh yeah, and all you also need to add uh, this leader. So leader is uh, double-sided. This is a major, major leader and minor leader, let's say. So the player who is play first uh, adding this token on this specific region can put uh, this major leader. After everything was happening, you are going to roll a die. One die is dice. One dice is for Rome. Second dice is for barbarians. You need to compare results. And um, higher result is a winner, obviously. So after that, if the um, battle in region is concluded and for example Ram won this um, this battle you can add another token in here from this auxiliary track to mark that Gallia uh, however you read it read it uh, is controlled by Rome and after that so I defeated green barbarians in here you have information how many barbarians was there and here are the spoils so the money or victory points that each of the uh, participants can get. The bigger one are for the player with the major um, leader and the small ones are for the players with the smaller leader, leaders. So this is the phase where you are helping uh, Roman Empire to grow and conquer other lands. After that, resolve conflicts, yes. After that, uh, we have another phase. Remove one of the other player's clients from the board, place one client on the board, move your player marker to the rightmost space of the turn track and as you can see this location this face has only one space so the player with the most influence can perform these actions and the rest can only watch after that we're going to another phase uh, place one client on the board to move your player marker to the right, sp uh, right most space of the turn or the track then place one client in province place one client in province this symbol means that you can place your um, clients only in a province controlled by um, by Rome uh, in this situation uh, this is not the case and after that we are going to administration uh, pay talents for your clients in buildings and pay for your position on the games tracks so this is an upkeep for each or if you want to control those buildings that grants you victory points you also need to pay money for them uh, if you cannot pay the money you are go you need to leave the building basically and also in this administration phase you need to pay for um, for the games roman people love the games and they uh, you need to uh, organize 
uh, games. In here we have a table where you can find information, how much population you have and how much money you need to spend uh, each round. And after that, gain one talent for each Roman province with at least one of your clients, except Italy. Except Italy saw this red uh, area. And after that, score prestige from provinces and buildings. Pro pre prestige, this is, those are victory points, talents, as I said previously, these are, uh, man this, is the, the, this is the money. And this is it. After th third rounds, th after third round, the player with the most prestige is the winner of and new uh, emperor. So this is it, this is Triumph. I think this game looks very promising. As I said, this is also a prototype, so keep this in mind. Some things can change in a final version of the game. So thank you so much for watching this video and see you in the next one.